Welcome back to the Capes and Cowl series where we talk about your finest Marvel Capes and Cowl superhero, Moon Knight. So today we're going to be talking about episode 2 of Moon Knight, Summon the Suit. If you're ready, let's go. Remember, you're in the zone, the superhero zone. Cue that intro. <laughs> Hello, and welcome to Superheroes 101, where the superhero wing is never done. My name is Xavier, and I'll be your host. And as you heard from the beginning of the video, we're going to be talking about Moon Knight. Of course, episode two, Summon the Suit. Super excited to talk about that with you guys. Also, this marks episode two of my Capes and Cowl series, where we talk about Moon Knight theories, reviews about Moon Knight, and so much more. So yeah, you can check that playlist out on my channel after this video is done. And yeah, guys, make sure you like, subscribe, and turn on my post notifications so you can notify every time I post, premiere, or go live on this very channel. Make sure that you leave a comment down below telling me if you think Amit is going to be a villain in the MCU going forward. So yeah, guys, without further ado, let's get right into this Moon Knight Episode 2 review. So summoning the suit was about basically summoning the suit, like the title says. That's it. End of video. Roll that intro. Yippee ki yay, let's rock. <laughs> Just kidding. Okay, so yeah, this was about how, you know, Stephen Grant had to summon the suit because you remember we discussed in the last episode that basically they are two different personalities put into one mind. And yeah, Mark happens to be the superhero, Moon Knight. And then, you know, Stephen Grant is the one on along for the wild ride. So, yeah, he ends up summoning the Mr. Knight suit. If you don't know comics and you don't know Moon Knight at all, Mr. Knight in the comics is basically an alter ego that, you know, Mark uses as a way to uh, get into mafia meetings and get intel on things he needs to know about his magical threats and foes. So, yeah, and we see that suit again, and he's very goofy in it. Stephen Grant is wearing the suit this time. And yeah, I found it very, very hilarious and comical. And honestly, I have to say, Isaac Oscar is very good in this role. Like, he fits the build, and honestly, I really want to see him play Moon Knight more often in the MCU after this series. So yeah. Other than that, in this episode, we get to meet Layla, the wife of Mark Spector. But what Layla doesn't know is that uh, Mark has a split personality. And right now, when she came to go get Steven after she call after Steven called her in the last episode, right? She does not know that she is talking to Steven, right? She keeps saying, Mark, drop the act. This is an alias. Along with other cops and other people in this episode think that Steven is an alter ego and an alias for Mark. So yeah, they, people don't realize that it's literally two different personalities in one head. And this is makes a direct connection to the hero Firestorm in the DC universe for those of you DC fans out there because Firestorm uh, is a one, two people put in one body. It is a guy and a professor put in one body and they have to share the body in order to be a superhero, which I find very interesting. But the only thing is, instead of being two individual people uh, in this situation for Moon Knight, it is literally one person, two different personalities, which is very interesting. So yeah, I have to say I love Layla. Layla is very fun to see in the MCU. Uh, she comes in clutch fighting, you know, Arthur's villains in this episode, and I thought that was really cool. And also we got a lot of Arthur things that we need to talk about. So basically Arthur is the guy with the crocodile staff who serves Amit, the crocodile goddess of whatever. Um, and basically he basically discusses and tells us the audience that he used to be the old avatar is what they call it for Conchu, AKA Moon Knight. He used to be Moon Knight. And as we know, you need a, like a sacrifice or you need like something major to happen for you to uh, become Moon Knight and I want to know more about him being Moon Knight because he apparently knows Khonshu very very well he predicts everything that he says and does so yeah and I want to know how he g became the avatar of source of this goddess Amit and I want to see if uh, Amit is going to be a bigger threat than we realize in this series and going on in the future of the MCU so yeah 
Arthur discusses and also tells us that his staff, his crocodile staff that he uses to balance people, also has a fraction of Amit's power in it. And we see him revive like a Egyptian like jackal is what they called it out of like what looks like the void of the multiverse the way that purple coloring was on the floor and the hand of the jackal came out which was very interesting and also we figure out that normal humans cannot see uh magical egyptian beings right that's why on the security tapes earlier on in this episode where um steven was showing his security guard friend uh, him running from the jackal that was in the first episode at the very end, right? He saw nothing. The security guard saw nothing because uh, magical foes, I'm guessing, found a way to hide themselves from human uh, devices and technology, which is very interesting because there's another connection of magical beings that do that, which if you watch Miraculous, I don't anymore, but if you watch Miraculous, the Kwamis, they discuss that blah, 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 they don't get captured on technology, which is also very interesting. So yeah, I feel like we should keep that in mind and keep that in the back of our heads as we move on forward in this magical multiverse arc. Because honestly, these magical foes, like for instance, Shumagorath in the Doctor Strange in the Multiverse of Madness trailer, right? Maybe people can't actually see him. Who knows? But we have to stay tuned to, to know going forward. So yeah. Also in this episode, Stephen Grant finds this room that uh, Mark Spector stays in when he is Mark Spector. It's like a storage locker. It's located in a storage locker. And it seems like he made friends with the security guard because the security guard knows exactly who he is. And yeah, it takes him straight to the room and he finds a bag full of money from different countries around the world, right? From different currencies. He finds a gun. He finds the amulet right, which Arthur ends up getting in the end of this episode, which is very, very terrifying. And yeah, so uh, in the very end of this episode, we get to see how Mark takes control from now on and how um, Steven is the one trapped inside of the body. Because technically, according to comic book lore, Mark is the one whose body Steven is inhabiting, if that makes sense. So, Steven is a split personality. Mark is the person in the body that it belongs to. And we actually get a proper comic book origin. So, according to the comics and according to the MCU, Mark was a archaeologist in Egypt, right? He got shot in the back of the head by this guy named Bookman in the comics, right? Because he double-crossed him because he was doing wrong, right? And that's when followers of Khonshu took him to the Khonshu Egyptian temple. And then Khonshu gave him, like an ultimatum of sorts it said you can either die now or become my vessel and take out my adversaries but you also get to live and obviously he takes that decision and i really really like the fact that um they're leaning more into comic book lore because i love comic book lore you should know that about me by now and yeah that is super exciting that they kept to the comic books for this one so yeah and yeah guys we get cool fight scenes we get to see the Moon Knight suit in action, that's really cool. And by the way, Hasbro just released a pre-order for the Moon Knight figure for the Marvel Legend line. And not gonna lie, I'm more than likely I am gonna get it. So yeah, maybe I'll do a review if I ended up end up getting it. So yeah, I really like the Moon Knight suit. I like the way it looks. And yeah, again. Carrying off the last video, I hope to see Moon Knight in Multiverse of Madness, and I feel like we're gonna need all hands on deck when it comes to Multiverse of Madness things. Also, we find out in this episode about Arthur and his followers to admit they are kind of like in a mind controlling state, right? I wanna know how they get those balance tattoos on their like forearms because it's not exactly explained at all. And uh, I really wanna know more about those. Like, did Arthur brainwash a bunch of people stick a staff up in the air and everybody just got these tattoos and they were mind controlled all of a sudden or what i just want to know and also we get to learn the motives of conchu and amit amit is interested in nipping the evil in the bud right she gets her vengeance before the person even make the bad decision meanwhile what conchu judges people and gets vengeance on people uh who already did the crime and now they got to pay the time right kind of like the steve rogers approach right and Amit is just trying to uh, kill innocent people. Also in this episode, Stephen Grant gets captured by Arthur 
and the Amit followers, right, who pose as cops, and I feel like that is very, very dangerous. And yeah, and I wonder, I know this is like right off the blue, right off the cuff, and this is like random, but I wonder if the power broker has some of those Amit followers uh, in her clan, you know, I wonder if Sharon is aware or has one of those Amit followers in her uh, little circle of evil. That is very interesting and I want to know if that is the case. So yeah, or if Arthur is in cahoots with the power broker uh, and that would be due for an interesting storyline with Falcon in the Winter Soldier or should I say Captain America in the Winter Soldier with Moon Knight. That would be a very good storyline and I'd watch it for sure. So yeah. And yeah guys, that was my review of Moon Knight Episode 2, Summon the Suit. I give this episode a 9 out of 10. I like the bit of story and dialogue that we got for this, you know, character in this story. And they really explain and go into detail about this character very well. And yeah, guys, what did you think about this episode? Leave your thoughts and theories down in the comments below because I want to know. And yeah, guys, thanks for watching this video. If you liked it, make sure you like, subscribe, and turn on my post notifications so you get notified every time I post from here or go live on this very channel. I post Mondays, Wednesdays, and Fridays. For those of you who are interested, you should follow my Instagram and TikTok for exclusive superheroes content. So, yeah. Leave down in the comments below if you think Amit is going to be a future villain moving forward in the MCU. Leave it down in the comments below because I want to know and have a conversation and debate with you guys. And yeah, guys, that was the end of this review. And I have one announcement. I just wanted to tell you, those of you who watch my Young Justice content, I will be reviewing the Calder arc, but I will be re reviewing the entire arc versus every episode because I feel like that's just easier for me and I can get more of my thoughts out in like a combined review format. But yeah, guys, that's the end of this video. If you want more content from me, you're gonna have to wait to the next video. And remember, yippee-ki-yay, let's ride.